Standing on my front porch, uncle locked in the prison cell. When I lost my cousin, I said, I'm gonna give him hell. Gotta be, that's my villain. He put me up on E-pills, trapping on McPherson, and I pray to God I don't get killed. Wicked on the phone, yelling at me, say I lost my mind, but I pray that you understood that I was homeless in due time. Write a punchline, make a killing off that. The only one that I know living off rap. Local rappers hate on me, I made it through and I ain't deceased. Overdose, ENT, the label that believed in me, they put an army behind me, so now I lost my decent seat. I've been writing rhymes since I was about 12 years old. Um, I remember I did, growing up I didn't have many friends, I wasn't very, a very sociable person, I wasn't really a socialite, so I would kind of stay to myself and I discovered that I could write at a young age. I started writing poetry and, and it, for me that was a big deal because you know to be a young kid from the ghetto and find a way to creatively express yourself and express how you felt about the things going on around you and to, you know, to be able to articulate things in a manner in which the average person wouldn't expect you to be able to was a big deal for me at that time. And uh, I remember watching, I used to watch Tupac videos, Bone Thugs and Harmony videos and I remember my mom, she had a friend uh, her friend had a son named Anton. He was a pretty troubled kid. And uh, he was into game banging and drugs and all that stuff at a young age. Way, like, entirely younger than he should have been into it. And I remember he, we were in the basement. And I asked him what he wanted to be when he grew up. And he, he put his hood on his head and he was like, I want to be a rapper. And I was like, you can be a rapper as an occupation? Like, that's an, that's an actual occupation that you can be? And he was, he re, I remember he mimicked, like, a Bone Thugs and Harmony video. And from that day forth, I, I kind of got into the hip-hop culture and started digging deeper to see what it was about and I watched a Rock Kim interview on TV and I watched a, a, a bunch of Tupac videos and stuff like that and, and those two people became my influences Rock Kim, Tupac and Nas as a child so uh, th that might have been the very moment where I, dis I discovered that this is what I wanted to do I saw Rock Kim on a, on a talk show and the people had so much respect for, for him and uh, his music and, I, I, and it just intrigued me and I wondered how could they respect the rapper that deeply and, that kind of, and I remember I woke up the next day and wrote my first rap. How do we know Tell? Tell. We, we go way back, you know. Like you said, we got a, a musical house. We used to do all type of stuff, get into all type of things. Tell was just a, a writer. Uh, I don't know. I yeah, Tell, I remember it'll be like 2 o'clock in the morning. Tell would just be walking like we'll come from a club or we'll come from a different venue, you know what I mean? It'll be like 2 2.30 in the morning. Teflon, everybody be crashed out. Teflon should be walking to the house back and forth, back and forth. He always say, in his he like to get his bars, he always repeat one bar repetitive. Like he just be going at it, uh, whatever bar it was. And then I was like, I hope you get that next bar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. But he, he would be right, like, like, like just crazy, crazy. Like it was so much. It was like the way he used to write, you know what I'm saying? It was crazy. I was recently this year uh, inducted as the. Uh, into the unsigned hype by the Source magazine, which is, uh, uh, for me as a rapper, has been like a lifetime goal. I read every issue of the Source growing up. I bought the magazine religiously. Uh, my parents were very religious, so I wasn't really allowed to listen to rap music. And uh, I used to hide, have to hide the magazines. So it was kind of a big deal for me to be able to take it home and sit it on the, on the coffee table and, and you know look my dad and I and kind of laugh. But. Uh, Unsigned Hype is one of those things, you know, Jay-Z started out in, in that column, uh, Biggie Smalls got the same stamp, Eminem, uh, Common, Kanye, Wale, I can name a million guys that got it, and I can name a million guys that got the same stamp that didn't go on to have as, you know, luxurious, luxury, built careers as they did. So, um, if anything, it motivates me to work a little harder and to, you know, actually become one of the rappers worthy of being mentioned in the same breath as those guys. I've always felt that if the second you lose hope, the second you lose uh, the desire to do this, the, the possibility of you not doing it becomes real. So I've always felt internally that this is what I'm supposed to do. I've always knew that this is my purpose. I've always, even when, I, when the chips were down and I didn't have any money and I was couch surfing and uh, sleeping 
home to home, I knew that this was what I was supposed to do. Lightning in the palms of the black Bob Hope. Aim at a Roman candle at a Roman soldier. Show you a new world like the Mars Rover. My inner strength strangled like a lion. Bob wire scream like Ouija boards when thrown into the fire. Beat for vendetta, better than my favorite rapper. Tattoo my name on the vertebrae of my favorite actress in the desert with an Arab woman and a chopper. My wrist game proper. Lucifer couldn't stop us. Printed me and Wayne do a project one day. Cause I bring gunplay to Project Runway. The subconscious of a hollow man. I am Martin Luther King Jr.'s hollow Pretty much homeless and I was living like wherever I could live. I was kind of catching the Metrolink, the train, sleeping on the train. Uh, I'd buy an all day ticket and just sleep on it back and forth. Uh, I'd go days without eating. Uh, I remember due to those circumstances, some of those circumstances prevented me from being able to write. And, and if anybody knows me, they know that I write all day, every day. And without the ability to write, I've become a very unhappy person. I've become very somewhat depressed. So I remember uh, I would try to find any opportunity to keep writing because I knew that that would be my only chance of just maintaining my happiness. And even in that situation, maintaining what I believe made me me was the fact that I liked to write and I, and I could use that as my vehicle to express myself.